don't shoot. It's me. Jody. Hi. I was um just passing by. I thought I'd buy you some lunch. Oh, well, no chance. I, I'm off to Rome. Oh, lucky you. Unlucky, Unlucky Rome. Rome. Well, it's a nice one. Straightforward surveillance, no problems, lots of loot. Mm. Shouldn't take long. Well, you should stay on a few days. Maybe. Do you know any girls in Rome? I've got some dynamite numbers. Jody, I wish you wouldn't do that. Do what? That. Kid around like that. Well, I'm not kidding. I know a lot of girls in Rome who'd be very Jody, bad. you're my wife. Well, I've got a big heart. Anyway, if you happen to be in Rome... We Rome, are married. Separated. By mutual agreement. Uh, yes, but still separated. And still married. Okay. Okay, go to Rome. Have a lousy time. I really don't care. Who said I was going to have a lousy time? I know lots of people in Rome. Some of them girls. Who? What does it matter? No. No. Of course it doesn't matter. We agreed. A trial separation. You go your way. I'll go mine. Right. What have you been doing? Oh, this and that. Actually, I've been pretty busy. Not so busy you couldn't drop by to ask me out to lunch. I was just passing by, I told you. But apart from that, you've been having lots of fun? Yes, I have. Last night, for instance, having lots of fun then? Um, yes. Another party, I suppose, out all night? Oh, dear. Mm -hmm. Alone. You were home by 7.30, no callers, your bedroom light was out by 10. Johnny, were you spying on me? No, 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 no. I just happened to be passing by. <sighs> That's a mess. Come on, let me do it, I do it better. Oh, it's crazy. Jody, you're crazy. You hated the thought of sitting around at home cooking for me, and now you just sit around and cook for yourself. Where's the sense in that? <sighs> Jody, I still love you. You still love me. Now, I know you still love me, so why don't we stop Good this idea. Girls love to be read to. Now, Jody, listen. There aren't any other girls. There never will be any other girls. You know that. Now, come with me. Come to Rome. Oh, Johnny, don't. It'll be hot, fun, romantic. Well, you'll be working. Only for the first couple of days or so. After oh, that, we can do what you like. Tell me about those first couple of days. What do I do? I don't want to wander around Rome alone, getting my bottom pinched. Well, you wouldn't have to. Listen, you could be useful. There are notes to be taken, reports useful. to be typed up. Notes to be taken? Johnny, that's what it's all about. Oh, Jody, please. Well, I want to be my own person. I want to be somebody. I You're can't my wife. Well, I guess that's not enough. Oh, Johnny. Johnny, I love you. I really do. But there's got to be more than that. Jody. Look, I can't miss that plane. Okay. Have a safe trip. Yeah. Oh, come on. Oh, wait. <clears throat> hey, I could uh, always mine the store for you while you're gone. Solve a few cases. Nail a few killers? Jody, will you come on? Oh, dear. Well, you're just not ready for me yet, that's all. What? Well, I was only kidding about minding the store, but... But? Well, if you'd said yes... Oh, come on, Jody. This is a detective agency for crying out loud. It's man's work. Johnny, if you'd said yes, Look, you might find Look, if this is going to develop into a women's lib tirade another row, I'm going to have to take a rain check on it. Look, my plane leaves... I'm only just going to make it. Jody, look, I do love you. Mm. I just, I just don't have the time. If you change your mind, I'll be staying at the Royale. Why didn't you say yes? Excuse me. May I help you? Uh, Baxter. Confidential inquiries. Recommended. Uh, Jay Baxter, thank you. Uh, uh, yes. Yes, that, that's right. You? Jay Baxter. Uh, Jody Baxter. Oh. Recommended. I highly recommended. Woman. I hadn't expected. Why not, eh?
Everything's changing. The whole world is changing. Uh, forgive me, my name is Tully, Arnold Tully. Oh, well, how do you do, Mr. Tully? How do you do? Shouldn't we go in? Wait, uh, oh, no, actually, you see, I was just on my way out to lunch. But, oh. uh, well, if it's important, you could join me. If it's not, you... Oh, it's important, yes. My niece, Annabella, murdered. Murdered? Mm. Oh, well, that's for the police. No, no, you, you don't understand. She was murdered five years ago since then. The police have, well, they've made no progress at all. Five years? Imp impotent, uh, abortive years. And nothing, nothing. That's why I decided, uh, finally, a private detective. Five years, and you want me to find the killer? No, 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 I, uh... I know who the killer is. I want you to prove it. Yeah. It was somewhere here. Somewhere. Somewhere. It's hard to be exactly sure. Five years, almost to the day. So many things have changed. It's a long time. It seems like yesterday. It will always seem like yesterday. They say that when one falls in love, time stands still. Perhaps that's true but it stands still for tragedy, as well as for love. It stands still when one loses such a precious thing. I never married. They dubbed me the misogynist of the family, the woman hater. <laughs> the truth is, women always scared me a bit. And then, suddenly, my brother and his wife were both killed, and I became a parent with a woman of my own to care for, a child woman, not someone to be scared of, someone to mold, to watch grow and blossom, someone to love at last. I want him behind bars. I want him to pay for what he did. Who, Mr. Dully? Who? Peter Ingram. You see, they all know. There isn't a dozen people in the whole town who'll talk to him. Some of the young men tried to beat him up. But he's a powerful man. Why doesn't he leave? Bravado. Killer. A brutal killer. Walking the streets. What did the police say about it? Yeah, well, Tully's right. It was Ingram, definitely. No doubt about it. Well, if you know that, then why didn't you... Ah, knowing's one thing, proving's another. Isn't that right, Charlie? Oh, we pulled him in soon after the murder, held him. How oh, was it, Charlie? About uh, three days? Four. Yeah, and then we had to let him go. I mean, we knew he did it, but we had to let him go. Oh, how do you know he did it? Oh, you know, a lot of circumstantial stuff. Timings, opportunity. Oh, and he, uh, he fancied her. Yeah, they'd worked together on some amateur theatrical thing, and he fancied her. Besides, I mean, he was the only possible suspect. Oh, yeah, it was definitely him. Yeah, we had enough evidence to bring him to trial. You did? Yeah, but not enough to guarantee a conviction. You bring him under trial, and they find him not guilty. They can never touch him again. It's been five years. It seems to me you haven't touched him at all. No, we couldn't take the chance. But one day... One day, some vital little factor may pop up and, uh... Like what? Like him doing it again? 
Mm -hmm. That's possible. Oh, that's so cold-blooded. That's immoral. That's fact. It's one of the facts of law. You think I like seeing a murderer walk free? Still, Tilly's brought in private help, so uh, <laughs> maybe you'll show us all the way, eh? Well, maybe I will. Look, Miss Baxter, I'm not fool enough to turn down any kind of help from wherever, even from a woman. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you all the cooperation you need. Now, these files are supposed to be confidential, but uh, if you want to browse through them, please yourself, OK? Oh, thank you. And uh, anything that's not in there, ask me. I was on the case. What do you think, Charlie? Hmm? Our girl detective. Well, she might turn up something. A fresh eye. Yeah, I didn't mean that. There's nothing to turn up, is there? No, I meant her. That figure. Your eyes practically fell out your cheeks. You sexy devil. <laughs> yeah, we could do with a few detectives like that around here. It'd be a big improvement on you. George, go home, George. Go home, George. You're always saying that. And give my regards to your wife. Oh, shh. That's below the belt, Charlie. Ah, you're just jealous. Just because you're not married. Because you haven't found Miss Wright yet. Or maybe you have. And you're not telling me, eh? Goodbye, George. See you. George? Mm hmm You told her wrong. The only possible suspect? What about that uncle of hers? Tully. Now, there was an unhealthy relationship. <laughs> I'll get it for you. Thanks. This one? Fine. Thank you. I teach back home in America. The flora and fauna of a foreign country. I would have thought they had birch trees in America. Oh, yes, they do. Yes, but actually, you know, uh, English birch. Did you know they import genuine London fog in cans? And Scottish water. Anyway, the kids will love it. I wish I'd had a teacher who looked like you. Yes. Thank you. Is that all? Yes, sir. Then how about some genuine English tea? I live just on the edge of the wood. No, well, actually, I left my car. Well, it'll just... be quite safe. Hardly anyone comes this way anymore. Besides, it's only a few minutes. OK. Yes, I'd love to. Good. After you.
April, I compare thee to a summer's day. Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed. And every fair from fair sometime declines by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fit. Are you an actor? There was once upon a time. Ten years of it. Then I came to the conclusion that Laurence Olivier I was not, so I packed it in. And uh, what do you do now? I write. Oh. What kind of writing? Oh, this and that. A bit for the newspapers, some drama criticism. I'm an authority on lousy actors, having been one myself. Yes, I used to do a regular column until... Uh, until they found someone better. Milk and sugar? Uh, no sugar. Don't you find it a little uh, spooky, living here all alone? I find it private. Well, do sit down. So you don't do any acting now at all, then? No. Well, not even local amateur things? Well, I've helped old Williams out a couple of times. Williams, he owns the local bookshop and runs the Amateur Dramatic Society. I've done the odd thing for him once in a while. Well, I, I suppose that's not a bad way of getting to meet people. Huh? Well, girls, anyway. Oh, well, there have been one or two occasions when it has been... Leave it. But somebody just... Leave it! They'll have run away by now. They always run away. Does this happen often? Not as often as it did. Small towns are funny things. They're close, like a family. Well, I, uh, I had a bit of a problem with this town a few years ago, and they won't let me forget it. I think after all this time they get tired. I think they'd forget sometime. Why don't you call the police? The police. Whoever it was, they've long gone by now. <clears throat> Thank you. You said you had a problem before. What did you do? Well, it's what they think I did. Look, <clears throat> do you mind if we drop it? No. Are you going to be around here long? No, just a few days. Well, I'd like to buy you dinner. There are a couple of places where they'll still serve me. Well, no, actually, uh, I'm going to be pretty busy. I see. Thank you for the tea. You're welcome. I really ought to be going now. I'll walk you to your car. Oh, no, that's all right, please. I know where it is. That's right, and you know where I am. Yes. If you should change your mind. I'll be seeing you.
Got a bit jumpy for a detective. Someone was chasing me. I was chasing you. You? I lost you back there. I cut across here to meet you. Well, why didn't you call out? Because he might have heard me. Ingram, if you had something in mind, I didn't want to put him off. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. That's why I'm here. I knew the first place you had for to be here and then Ingram's. I mean, you didn't think I'd uh, let you walk into a killer's house without, uh, without police protection, did you? I, uh, I left my car down the road a bit. Uh, you don't mind, do you? No, I don't mind. How long have you been here? <sighs> a while. Then you must have seen who did it. I did what? Well, somebody threw a rock through Ingram's window. <laughs> did they now? Well, was it you? No, it damn well wasn't. And if I had seen who did it, I'd have looked the other way. Anything that rubs Ingram's nerves raw is okay with me. Anything. It'll make him break and give himself away. Yes, well, that only works if you're sure of one thing. Now, what's that? That he's the man you want. She really was pretty. She was beautiful. You know, it, it's very odd. The police reports are so full of Ingram and his behavior. There's very little about her, her state of mind. Where was she going that day? She merely went for a walk. No. You found something. No, it's just that she was a woman, and so am I. See, she wouldn't have been just going for a walk, as it had been raining. But she did go for a walk. A long walk down a muddy path that doesn't go anywhere. Except to Ingram's cottage. It's a mile further on. Yes, I know that. I met him today. And? Well, I don't know. You see, a woman usually takes a walk like that if she has something on her mind or if she's going to meet her lover or lover. if she... She was a child. Well, she was 17 years old. I... I would have known. She would have told me. Would she? How would you have reacted? Angry? Protective? Jealous? I was responsible for her. Well, Mr. Tully, that would have been a perfectly normal reaction, a father's reaction. You've kept your room exactly as it was, haven't you? May I see it? The police went over it with a fine-tooth comb. Oh, yes, I know that, but not with a woman's eye. May I, please? Yes, of course I will. Come back and do that later. Oh, no, please, that's all right. You sure? Yeah, stay. And if Mr. Tully likes it kept clean, insists clean and just as it always was. I hope you catch him. Who? Ingram, that's what you're here for, isn't it? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, I hope you catch him. She was lovely, Miss Annabella, lovely. You knew her well, then? Oh, since she was that high, I was the last person to see her alive. Last but one, that is. Came into the kitchen, she did, to borrow a bag. A bag? What kind of bag? Oh, a plastic thing. Like you use in the deep freeze. 
Then she tripped out again. Oh, it's a lovely morning, Auntie Fitch, she said. Auntie Fitch, her last words. That's my name, see? I'm Mrs. Fitch, but she always called me Auntie. A, a lovely day. Uh -huh. But hadn't it been raining? Well, it had just stopped. But it was a lovely day to her. Poor little thing. She didn't know she was going to have a knife plunged into her ribs, did she? So she was really uh, especially happy that day, then? Uh -huh. Why? I don't know. Had something to do with that book, though. What book? Well, the one she had with her. Cuddling it, she was, like it was something special. Hanging would be too good for that man. They don't even do that now. So she left, taking a book with her. I told you. Oh, yes, I know. I was just thinking aloud. Uh, what kind of book was it? Oh, a, a Shakespeare thing. Like that one. Yes, exactly like that one. But, Mrs. Fitch, there wasn't any book found on the body. Did you tell the police about this? Oh, I told them. Fat lot of attention they paid me. Not important, they said. Well, neither it was. The important thing is for you to get that Ingram behind bars. Stopped off for years. Ah, yes, here we are. It's what I call one of my perennials. Student passes exam, Christmas, a birthday. It's an always welcome gift. Uh, do you keep a record of all your sales? You mean copies sold at a particular period? Uh, well, yes, so that we can restock. And um, how far back do your records go? Five years, maybe? Yes, she did. She loved the theater. Got that from me, I suppose. Were you an actor, too? No. No, it's just that I always found the fantasy world of the theatre infinitely preferable to the realities that life has to offer. So she only acted in amateur groups, then? Yes. But she was good. Very good. We talked of sending her to a drama school. Was her Rosalind good? Rosalind in As You Like It. She did play that, didn't she? Superbly. Yeah. I'm prejudiced, of course, but I thought it was... The most beautiful Rosalind you'd ever seen. For the most beautiful Rosalind I've ever seen. From the worst Oberon ever. Did you give her that book? Well, somebody did. And you know what I found out? The day before she died, the bookshop sold a book just like that of Midsummer Night's Dream. Now, I think that Annabella bought that book to give to someone. To Oberon. The worst Oberon ever. Mr. Tully, I think that Oberon murdered your niece. Baxter. Yes, is that dinner invitation still open? Mr. Ingram. Mr. Ingram. Oh, I... a detective. <gasps> a detective. <gasps> a dirty detective. <gasps> a professional snoop. <gasps> Who told you? I still have some friends left. Williams called. He told me you'd been snooping around the bookshop. Oh. I am going to bleed to death. 
Well, hold it there. Here, give me that. Don't waste any more of it. Glass! Why did you come here tonight? What else can I tell? Did you ever play the classics? Hey? Eh? The classics, Shakespeare. Well, yes, of course. Every actor sooner or Midsummer later. Night's I... Dream? What? The Dream. Did you ever play that? Yes. Oberon? No. Yes. A couple of times, I suppose. How were you? What? How were you? Were you good, bad? <laughs> I was okay. But you weren't the worst Oberon ever. What? Well, somebody may remember. Well, just a minute. Best. How boring ever. Which Hazel? I'll help keep down the bruising. Thank you. That really was dumb of me to go blundering around those woods after dark. He left here to meet Ingram. You did meet him. No, I did not. I never got there. Mr. Briggs, sir. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> All right. What happened? Thank you, Mrs. Fitch. <sighs> That's going to be a nasty bruise. How did you find out about it? News travels fast in a town like this, especially bad news. Now, tell me about it. I just went walking and tripped and fell. That's all. Well, there's marks around your neck, too. Please. Now he had a go at you. Well, we've got him this time. I'll pull him in. What grounds? I'm not making any complaints. Well, I'm not. I'm not accusing anyone. Not complain? This is what we've been waiting for. Well, whose side are you on, anyway? What the hell do you want? I want to find the man who killed Annabella. That's what I want. Baxter. Found something. Mm-hmm. Look. What do you think this is? Makes a change from the usual heart and arrow. And this, the cranny is right and sinister. I'm sorry. Haven't you ever read Shakespeare? <laughs> Played it once when I was a kid at school. Hmm. Still looking for a vital clue? No chance. We had the best forensics men in the country. Oh. Why are you here? I thought I'd take a country walk. No, I don't think so. You're right. I thought I'd wander and recreate. You never know. What happened to your face? Ciao.
Hello? Signor Baxa, una telefonata per lei. Oh, right. In Inghilterra, parla per favore. Johnny? Jody? Hi, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Well, I'm in a bit of a mess. I'm sorry, what was that? This is a hell of a bad line. I said I'm in a mess. No, I still didn't get that. A mess, Johnny. I'm in a mess. Miss me? Well, I miss you too. Oh, no, you don't understand. Oh, I think I realize how lonely your job is. Well, that's marvelous. What? That's the best news I've had all week. What is? That you're lonely. Look, Jody, I should be back in a few days. Oh, Johnny, well, that's terrific. Uh, listen, I need some advice. I need you too. Look, I'll try and cut this short, get back as soon as I can. Oh, Johnny, it's no use. It's okay, I'll work it out for myself. I'm sure we can work it out, my love. Never had any doubts about it. Well, I wish I were as sure. What was that? I said I... I love you, Johnny. What? Jody, are you there? Oh, shut up! Well, it's about time. Sorry. Anything up? No, but you know it's my birthday. The wife's expecting to be taken out for dinner. I won't catch you anyway. What, you, uh, you've been chasing a bird across the muddy fields, have you? George. Go home, George. Go home, George. <laughs> chasing a bird across the muddy fields at your age. Mr. Tully, I've taken a retainer from you. I want to give it back. For a lot of reasons, but... mainly because I'm a fraud. You see, you hired the wrong Jay Baxter. It's my husband who's the detective, not me. Mr. Tully? Mm. I know. You know? Mm. I told you, uh, Jay Baxter was highly recommended to me. When it turned out to be you, I naturally checked back. I'm sorry. Why? Well, I'm satisfied. I want you on the case. Thank you. Oh, I'm so sorry. You've done well so far. Nothing concrete, of course, but... Looking at it with a woman's eye, I believe you said. Perhaps that's what was always wanted. There has to be one thing. He must have made one mistake. Perhaps it needs a woman's eye to discover it. You're tired. You can't possibly drive back to your hotel. Stay here. You can have Annabella's room. I know a 
bank where the wild thyme blows, where ox slips and the nodding violet grows, quite over canopied with luscious woodbine, with sweet musk roses and with eglantine. There sleeps Titania. Who's Charlie? Spencer. He's not due until two, is he? Do you need something? No, no, no. On her birthday. Good morning. Good morning. It suits you, this coffee. The brews. I like my women with a little imperfection. Perhaps I should send them all over to meet Ingram. You still not bringing charges then? No? Well, maybe there's one or two I might like to bring against you. Yeah. Withholding evidence. Oh, please. That book was up there for anyone to see. Your men obviously overlooked it. Anyway, it's not evidence of anything. Isn't it? Ingram's an actor. Well, he's not necessarily a bad one. The worst Oberon ever. All right. Well, how about fraud, then? You led Mr. Tully here into thinking you were a detective? No, I already told Mr. Tully the truth. I offered to give him his retainer back. Ask him. It's true. I see. Yeah. You know, young lady, you're playing with fire. Now, you play with fire, you end up burnt to a crisp. Good morning, Mr. Tully. Good morning. <sighs> I'm sorry. He arrived, started talking. Perhaps I told him too much. Oh, it's not your fault. Oh, that man. He's... Yes? Phone call, sir. For me? For Miss Baxter. Oh. It's from him. From that man, Ingram. Yes, I want to thank you. Well, obviously, you didn't say anything about what happened the other night. Well, nobody's been here. I want to thank you, that's all. No, no, don't hang up. Listen, what you said that night, the worst Oberon ever, was that important? Well, just because I've heard that expression before and I've remembered where. Williams. At the bookshop. He runs the Amateur Society, has done for years. <laughs> he must have seen some of the worst Ob oh, You can't today, it's Sunday. Hello? Uh, hello?
Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams? Well, thanks very much. Well? You seem to attract violence. The doc says injuries are consistent with a fall down the stairs. Or a chop on the neck. An expert in karate, too. You weren't being very expert when you got that bruise on your face, were you? So it's an accident. Well, that's the first opinion. The doc seemed pretty sure. Well, what a convenient accident. Why? Because you didn't have time to talk to him first. What about, anyway? Oberon. Well, that's stuff in the book. Yes, why not? Williams had an amateur theatre group for years. He probably would have remembered the worst Oberon ever. How did you know that? I prefer not to say. Ingram? He told you that. Hey, then maybe Williams didn't fall down the stairs. Why? What's going on? A sudden death, accidental. Williams? Yeah, little Miss Sherlock Holmes here found him. Well, what the hell are you doing here, anyway? I was just passing by and saw the car. What happened? A trip fell, broke his neck, according to the doctor. Poor old Williams. Poor old Williams, come on. You fell the back of his hand a few times. So did you. Yeah, but his single job particularly, didn't he? He always gave you the lowest marks for everything. And Williams taught school here till he retired and took this place. He was miserable and he was vicious. It made sense that he was one of the few who still talked to Ingram. Two of a kind. Oh, well, Miss Baxter, there's uh, no need for you to hang around. I'll be in touch with you later. Well, now you're here, Charlie, you can give me a hand. I want to take a look upstairs. Mr. Tully. I know about Williams. I can't say I ever liked him. He was too close to Ingram for that, but... I am sorry. It was an awful accident. If it was an accident. You mean the police have found something to suggest it wasn't? No. I have been full of thoughts of vengeance. I have incubated hate for so long. That's why I came to you. But this last few days, I've... I've come to realize that eventually one must forget. Keep picking at an old wound and it never heals. It just goes on hurting. I don't want you to think I'm ungrateful. I'm very Mr. grateful. Tully, do you want me to leave? Yes. All right. Tomorrow. I'll leave tomorrow. I'm sorry. I misjudged you, didn't I? You're open to trap him. Ingram. That's why you talk to him. Yes, you'd have to speak to him. Lead him astray. Wait for the moment when he makes that fatal slip and... Mind you, I told him when he first brought her here. Mere child. 
Told him the heartache at the end of it. Not right for a bachelor to be bringing up a young girl. No, not right at all. Now, if he'd married, found himself a good, wholesome woman, someone nearer his own age, I told him. Mr. Tully's mind at rest. Then perhaps he'd start looking and seeing his way clear to. Should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? ID? Oh, yes, Miss Baxter. Speaking. What can I do for you? Uh, I just want to check something out on the autopsy report. Of Annabella Tully. Could you have a look for me? I don't have to look. I know that one backwards. What do you want to know? Well, wasn't there something about dirt or earth being found under her fingernails? Yes, earth was found under the nails of both hands. Why? It was established she was attacked from a standing position and then fell onto her back, right? Yes, but... Oh, I, I'm just following a hunch. Um, one more question. Well, that was yesterday, but why... Hello? And what's your about now? Don't know. It didn't make sense. Nothing. See you later. Mr. Tully, I think I'm about to earn that fee. And all because of a plastic bag. Bag? Yes, you see, Annabella bought a book to give to someone, right? And then she put it in a plastic bag. Now, why not paper and a ribbon? Because she was going to hide it. Bury it. Mr. Tully, out in the woods, in a place that only she and Oberon would know about. Believe me, Mr. Tully, a young girl in love would do that kind of thing. Now, I bet you that book is still there, with her inscription on the flyleaf and his name. The killer's name, Mr. Tully. I'm going to find out. That wood is two miles wide. It could be anywhere. No, there's only one place that it could be. This loam, this rough cast, and this stone doth show. Mr. Tully, for a theater buff, you don't know too much about Shakespeare. The wall. 
I'm talking about the wall, Mr. Tully, through which the lovers did whisper often and very secretly. Clever. Very clever. I often wondered about that dirt under her fingernails. You. The worst Oberon. Yeah. But don't forget the effort. Williams never did. Just ten years old I was, and he leaned on me. Shouldn't have told her. Shouldn't have... I had a wife and kids. She knew that. If it had come out, it would kill my chances of promotion. She knew that too. Precocious little... I'm sorry. You're big, George. Bigger than me. But remember at school. Big as you were, I always took you apart. You never won. George. Sit down, George. You can't ask a question like that. When was his birthday? And did not expect to arouse my curiosity. I've been following him since. Why did you ask it? Women's intuition. Was that his birthday present? It's crazy. It is ridiculous. Jody, it's unethical. Okay. Oh, come on, Johnny. It's money. It's a side check. I did a good job. Oh, what am I gonna do? Cash it. And cash it on me. I'm useful. Very. Oh, come on, Johnny. Cut me in as an equal partner, huh? We'll work together. Work together? You mean you and me here? Well, yes. Okay. Oh, Johnny. <laughs> Partners again. Uh-huh. Okay. Back to it. 
Investors.